Good morning, second graders. I wanted to go over a couple of things that are on your worksheet and review over some things too. Okay. So let's go over what's on your worksheet and then we'll review. I don't know what happened to my pen now. I had to stop because I had some messages from parents. So, alrighty guys. So on your worksheet today, you're doing money. So you're trying to, number one, you're to mark the circle onto the coins that equal 35 cents. Um, there's only one, okay? I think that y'all can do that. A quarter is 25 cents. A dime is 10 cents. A nickel is 5 cents. And the penny is 1 cent, okay? Um, then they want you to estimate, estimate, um, not using your ruler of how long this line is and circle your answer. And then using the ruler, you're going to um, draw a box around the correct answer, okay? Then it has number three, if Ivy bought a pencil for 10 cents, how much money would she need to buy three? Um, Y'all can do that, um, count by tens, okay? Three pencils, count by tens, okay? 10, 20, all right? Tell me the time. Y'all are doing good on the time. Okay, doing really good on the time. Alrighty, find the quotients. So when you see that, when you read that, those instructions are telling you, you are going to divide. A quotient is the answer to your division problem, okay? And today they have the division bar and not the symbol for division. So don't let that um, confuse you, okay? So on the first one, it has, and this is how you would say it, 10 divided by two. Well, two times what gives you 10? You can count by twos, hmm, two, four, six, eight, ten. So two times what gives you ten? Five. So you'll put the five. So it would be ten divided by two equals Five. So that's how you would write that, guys. The five goes on top. Oh, it's your twos. We're doing twos. So you have 20 divided by two. Well, we can do the same thing. Let's count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So, 2 times what gives you 20? 10. I think y'all can do the rest. Count by twos, okay? Count by twos. Twos, 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 twos. What if I did this? I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge y'all. Are y'all ready for this? And then we'll go to the back of the worksheet. Four times two times two. Four times two times two. Okay, so you're gonna do 
the exact thing that you do when you add multiple numbers, okay? So you'll start, you'll start right here, four times two, four times two, four times two. My four fingers out, count by twos. Two, four, six, eight. So then you can go eight times two. Because I multiplied four times two, brought the eight down. Now you have to multiply that eight to the next number. Well, that's two. Well, eight fingers. Count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fourteen, sixteen. Looky there. Four times two times two equals sixteen. That wasn't so bad, was it? Y'all can do that. Okay, enough of the challenge. All right, let's look at your measures. One dozen equals how many things? We all know this. One dozen. How many cookies are one dozen? How many eggs do you have in a dozen in a carton? That's a dozen. 12. One dozen equals 12. One dozen equals 12 things. Okay. One pound. is how many ounces. Remember I talked to y'all about this. Um, when you're born, they weigh you and you're going to weigh in pounds and in ounces, okay? When you get older, they just do it by pounds. But when you're younger, they do it to pounds, to ounces, okay? So when you were born, you probably weighed, huh, eight pounds, six ounces, eight pounds, two ounces, um, eight pounds, two ounces, um, six pounds, five ounces, okay? So ounces is, your, is, is, is a measurement of weight, okay? So they're asking you how many pounds equals an ounce. The ounce is smaller than the pound, but you have to have so many ounces to make one whole pound, okay? And that is 16. 16, it's been a while since we've done this. So one pound equals 16 ounces, okay? So if you were born and it was, Eight ounces, eight pounds, 16 ounces. Why don't you just say nine pounds then? Because you can add up after the 16, 16 pounds or uh, higher, you can add a pound, okay? 16 ounces equals one pound, okay? One pound. Okay, one kilo, kilogram. That kilo is telling you something there. Kilogram equals how many grams? Kilo, kilo, kilo. Kilo. Kilo equals a thousand. So one kilogram equals one thousand grams. One thousand grams. Next year, I'll teach y'all something about that. I have a little saying that I do. And then one pound, one pound, huh, one pint, excuse me, 
equals how many cups? How many cups? How many cups equal a pint? I've, I've drawn this on the board many times for y'all. So you have your little coffee cup here, and that is eight ounces, okay? Two cups equals one pint. Two cups equals one pint. Then you have one quart equals how many pints? How many, how many pints? How many pints equal a quart? It takes two of them. Sorry about my drawings, but they're not that beautiful. Two. Two pints equal one quart. Now, one gallon equals how many quarts? How many of these big cartons equals a gallon. The gallon is what your milk comes in. The big, the gallon that your mom and dad get from the store for your cereal. It takes four of them. It takes four. Okay, then we're going to go to the shapes. Now, when we talk about the shapes, let's talk. This has been a while since we've done this. They uh, have terms the side, the vertex, the edge, and the face. Okay, your side. Try to do it where y'all can see it. The side is, is the line on the side. Okay, the side. It could be this one too. That's the side. The vertex is the angle or the angle or the corner, okay, of where the two lines meet, okay? So the dots are the vertexes. The edge The edge of the cube edge. Okay. Then you have the face and they used the triangle prism. The face is the front. The face is the front of it. Okay. All right. Your word problem, I think you can do that. Clock, I feel like you can do that. The temperature, you can do that too. Just make sure that you make a straight line and you don't go over the measure, please. And then you have your missing numbers. Guys, missing numbers should not be that hard. Um, nine plus what gives you 16? Nine plus what equals 16? Well, that number is not going to be larger than 16, so we know it's going to be smaller, okay? What's the opposite of addition? Subtraction. So, subtract 16 minus 9. Now, if that's too hard, 
which it shouldn't be, but if it is, you can always go, okay, I have nine. So let's start. What comes after nine? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven lines. Well, let's see here. If I put seven there, does nine plus seven equal 16? Well, yes, it does. Okay, it does. You can do this uh, same thing to the next one. Blank plus three equals 15. And then you have 18 minus what equals seven? Well, this one you're not going to, uh, you're not going to add, but you can subtract. Subtract 18 minus seven. Well, eight minus seven is one, and one minus zero is one. So it's 11. Or you can do what I did up here. You can see how many more lines you get when you get to 18. So you can just do it the opposite way. Okay? Y'all can do this. Now, your test is tomorrow. And on your test day tomorrow, I did not make you do a worksheet. I just made it for the next day for Wednesday. I'm trying to slow some things down because I know it's getting kind of difficult for you and the parents having to um, learn new stuff and do all this. And I'm probably going to stop soon and start reviewing too. So um, over everything that we've learned this year. My main focus right now is I want you to know your facts. I want you to know your addition, your subtraction, and your multiplication of what we have learned so far. We've learned zero, one, two, five, and 10. Those are the factors we've learned. That's all I ask for you to do, okay? It's okay if you don't get them and understand them. We'll go back over it um, when y'all come into third grade next year. We'll start all over with those multiplication facts, but you have to know your subtraction and your addition, okay? All right, so tomorrow on your test, you have combinations. Your parents will say to you, you'll have numbers. Think of place value when you hear them. Um, you have a word problem, and then you have some multiplication problems, okay? Then on the back, you have some money you have to count. Guys, if you need to, it says circle the bills and coins needed for each amount. They're giving you an amount, and you're going to tell me how, how, how many of what you need. For instance, for $6, if you have, if you have $3 bills and one $5 bill, well, what are you gonna circle? You need six. So you would circle the $5 bill and the $1 bill because five plus one is six, okay? Then you're adding and subtracting um, and then you are doing another word problem. Then you're adding. Don't forget to carry over. And then you're subtracting one that you are going to have to borrow. Please don't forget to borrow. Y'all are forgetting to borrow. Okay. All right. If the number on top can't, if the number on top is smaller than the bottom number, you can't smush it, can you? The bigger number is the only one that can smush if it's on top, okay? All right. Well, good luck, and I hope that y'all, uh, well, I know y'all do good. I shouldn't even have to say good luck, all right? I'll be back Wednesday to go over your lesson on Wednesday.